Uh, thank you, Ahmad. I think, uh, and thank you all the distinguished speaker. I think this is a um, uh, remarkable uh, platform, uh, which, which is uh, really very important for continuing medical education. Uh, uh, what I mean, basically, uh, I'm going to share uh, uh, during this time, uh, ultrasound guided PCNL, which I've been doing uh, for last uh, 25 years. I started my journey uh, back uh, when I came from UK in 1998 and did the first uh, uh, PCNL in Peshawar. So I'm going to briefly touch on the ultrasound guided PCNL. Then there are a couple of videos, but before that, uh, I think we all know that it is uh, uh, important to know about the global uh, kidney diseases, which is a very uh, important, uh, particularly to our region. Pakistan is is in that region where there's increasing stone burden, and uh, we all know that ionizing radiation, as you already said, you know, is very important in the diagnosis, treatment, and follow up of these patients. Uh, this is just a glimpse of the stone burdens which we are dealing here in Peshawar and north of Pakistan. And uh, uh, up till, I'll say, the uh, 90s, what I mean, even now, what I mean, nearly 30% of the work is done by the open surgery, but things are moving on to the minimally invasive surgery, and most of the PCNL are done nearly in every hospital. Uh, like every tertiary hospital of the province. Uh, th this is another uh, picture, the stones we are dealing here in Peshawar. Uh, just a glimpse, uh, I'm showing that. And uh, these are the different modalities of uh, ionizing radiation, which uh, uh, is required to, to help in the diagnosis and in the management of stone disease. Uh, ultrasound scan is uh, is a big breakthrough in uh, managing uh, different conditions, particularly the uh, stone disease, and I find it a very friendly. Ionizing radiation, as we know, that it is very important to know the it helps in 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 uh, making a diagnosis, but at the same time to know about the anatomy and localizing the disease and also guiding manurings what i mean during surgery when you're putting your guide wire and then plus sheet and balloon and uh, at the same time we need uh, ionizing radiation for monitoring of these patients and it we get help of all uh, this during pre intra and post operative period this is one of the uh, article which uh, is really uh, uh, helpful and I, I I really liked it. Alara, which is the which is a, a step towards minimizing the uh, the radiation, and uh, it is to help to optimize the uh, radiation during surgery, and also uh, what I mean re reduce the uh, use of radiation, particularly during the surgery or postoperatively. And uh, this is the article which has uh, been uh, published in 2022. And it's a multi-center uh, study which uh, review actually uh, the, uh, the, the, how to minimize the uh, radiation exposure uh, during uh, endourology. And uh, one of the things which I observed in this study is uh, urologists must be diligent to minimize and mitigate this uh, uh, operative risk and exposure risk and implementation strategies such as the teaching program, fluoroscopy checklist, and judicious use of CT scan imaging, amongst other things, in a, is a step towards improving practice in this area. And this is the International Commission on radiological protection guidelines for the healthcare, which particularly the, the what I mean, uh, if it goes beyond certain limit, uh, it is uh, a result in uh, fatal cancer and hematological malignancy. Therefore, we have to be 
uh, very careful in using the uh, ionizing radiation. 70 to 97 uh, percent uh, urologists underestimate the radiation exposure, uh, uh, particularly not only to the healthcare, but at the same time to the patients. And uh, this uh, Fredmund et uh, al. Uh, uh, published uh, this study where 40 percent of the urology residents uh, failed to uh, receive adequate radiation safety training. And uh, Association between increased radiation risk exposure and increased tone burden, operative time, BMI, and multiple access track increases the exposure to the radiation. And here comes the use of fluoroscopy uh, along with the uh, uh, what I mean, use of ultrasound with fluoroscopy, and certainly reduces the uh, risk of radiation. And that that is the important steps. How to minimize uh, the radiation when one can use the ultrasound or use the ultrasound with fluoroscopy, uh, particularly in making access uh, in, in the uh, initial phase. And uh, that can help and reduce the radiation. And it is very important and paramount to implement the pre-fluoroscopy checklist considering the ELARA checklist. And uh, also the ELARA trained technicians and radiographers, if they are trained, so we certainly can reduce the ionizing radiation risk. And ideally, uh, dosimeters should be there, both inside and outside the lab, which is again, expensive from our point of view in our country. Uh, alarms can also be used in the CM, which can reduce the radiation. And uh, as I already mentioned, trained ELARA conscious technician radiographer are required. And education in the radiation safety should be a standardized and compulsory part. Intraoperatively, we can reduce the uh, duration of the exposure, like pulse fluoroscopy, distance from the X-ray beam, and physical shielding. Uh, here is the ultrasound view uh, where the uh, importance of the ultrasound comes as it also uh, shows the blood vessel with the Doppler studies. And we use the linear probe uh, in the uh, ultrasound uh, use. And these are the advantages. As we all know, it's radiation-free, real-time, and uh, shorten the procedure, certainly. Uh, because movement of the C-arm and, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, time saving of the uh, when we don't use the C-arm and decrease number of puncture because you are directly real time entering into the uh, calyx, calyx and uh, you also avoid contrast and you can also uh, know about the intervening tissues. Uh, certainly you have to, uh, one has to look at the CT scan that if there's any intervening tissue, particularly the bowel to where we need to change our strategies. These are the disadvantages. Certainly, what I mean, the whole caliceal anatomy, as it is observed in the uh, in, in, in during fluoroscopy, is not there in the ultrasound, and uh, also uh, there is uh, limited targeting abilities, and so on, so forth. This is a picture which I always keep in front when I'm doing a PCNL. And really, uh, we have to know where you are making the puncture and what are the surrounding structures which you can uh, uh, face and you can uh, avoid injury to those structures. This is the way the linear probe is used. Uh, and uh, particularly, you're targeting the minor calyx uh, where it, it is, there are different techniques. Uh, if you see here, the, the the needle is going this way, and if you see here, it is going along the linear probe. But certainly, uh, you need to really go into different directions, see the anatomy, what is anterior, what is on the lateral side. So, therefore, it's very important to uh, to 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 be knowing about the ultrasound. And I think it's very important that uh, our pro training program should include training of our urologists, uh, tra urology training, 
uh, in uh, ultrasound, which is a very important uh, 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 factor. Uh, this is an article uh, which has uh, uh, this is a systemic review and meta-analysis of ultrasound guided versus fluoroscopy, and it clearly shows that this is ultrasound guided PSN is an effective as fluoroscopy and has the advantage of lower complications rates. And this again reflects the stone-free rate, uh, which is again is not different in uh, both the procedures particularly when you're considering in prone, supine position, flank position. So this is another uh, uh, article, randomized control trial, which shows ultrasound guided uh, PCNL uh, in both prone and supine position. And overall, uh, what I mean, the uh, stone clearance is not much difference. And ultrasound uh, PCNL either in prone or supine is effective, feasible, and safe. Uh, again, using the uh, help of uh, uh, adopters, uh, one can avoid uh, the uh, bigger vessels and certainly decrease the hemorrhage. And certainly, uh, what I mean, if you see the, if you want to target this area, so this is important, and uh, this is the pyramid of, as we all know, uh, to avoid that. And this is the different uh, probes uh, and uh, where you got the, uh, where you can pass the needle and it guides you. Uh, so again, uh, it, uh, it is uh, one of the tool available. And uh, this is a real time ultrasound uh, guided PSNL using Sonic's GPS system where uh, one can see the, uh, the finger, the, the, the needle guidance and certainly it is inexpensive uh, as compared to the simple linear probe. Uh, and this is another one, which is a robotic uh, arm optical tracker system, uh, which is again, uh, sh has shown that it, uh, is, uh, is, it decreases time uh, of, uh, of puncturing the calyx. Again, it is expensive. Uh, this is the, another study which shows uh, uh, another calipers uh, one where the needle is going here into the system and the linear probe look at the uh, at the system and where you can hit. Uh, so there are different ways of doing the, these techniques. Uh, this is another uh, uh, comparison of the uh, uh, the ultrasound guided and the fluoroscopy guided. Uh, uh, PCNL, and if you see the radiation exposure here in the uh, uh, fluoroscopy is much higher, and same time of puncture, same, if you see at the ultrasound guided puncture, it is much less as compared to fluoroscopy guided. Now, this uh, uh, audit which uh, uh, we conducted uh, from 2002 to 2000. 23 with 3,800 patients. And uh, this clearly uh, shows, uh, you know, our own uh, work here in Peshawar, which we have been doing, uh, like uh, this is the prone ultrasound guided, this is supine. Uh, so it's a large bulk of the, uh, this is again the, 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 the prone one, which is with the C arm, and this is in the supine. And uh, for the last uh, more than two years, what I mean, I'm doing a lot of cases under spinal anesthesia. So they, nearly we have done about, uh, uh, this is the, if you can see this part is the under spinal. So uh, probably during the last two years, I've done very few cases under general anesthesia all. And about uh, amongst this, uh, about seven or seven cases has been converted into the general anesthesia because of the prolonged anesthesia, uh, because prolonged procedure, which uh, patient is feeling uh, uncomfortable, therefore uh, has been converted into general anesthesia. And this is again stone, stone free rate uh, amongst different procedures. Uh, this is the uh, supine position, which I normally make the, uh, the, the, the position. And this is the posterior axis line and certainly in this area, I operate. Um, this is the basic my setup. I, I use a PCNL trap and where everything is lying here. 
the monitors is here, and this is the piece, the the the, the uh, ultrasound machine. You can see the needle is going in. In the next one, this is just a brief, a small video, which would show how to use the ultrasound and. And if you see the, uh, what I mean, the needle is what I mean, it moves with the uh, probe at the, 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 this is, and at one time when I was uh, demonstrating this in Portsmouth uh, in UK, when uh, I was visiting there and they were telling me, you know, this name was given to this technique, uh, Goosh technique. Uh, they were Goosh the batsman, uh, the, 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 the opener batsman for the for the for the British uh, county, uh, he used to look at the ball, at the bowler, and at the wicket. So you just look at the same uh, view. So this is uh, another video in the in the prone position, and uh, if you see here again uh, uh, the ultrasound probe. Yeah, linear, and you go with the needle here. The way it is moving, you're looking at the kidney, and you move your needle in this way. So this is the simplest, what I mean, it's not much involved as the cost-wise, as if you want to use, use sonics or tracker. And if you see here, uh, 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 it's not a very uh, clear picture, but certainly it will show you the needle going in and uh, this this is this is the area which is the needle going in and if you see the needle you can see the movement of the needle and, and, and during this time, uh, one person uh, has been dedicated, one assistant, to continuously uh, 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 have the, uh, the fluid from the ureteric catheter, which is continuously coming here. And we... I'll just... Uh, I'll just show you one thing here. Uh, this is the here. What I mean, what I do is basically the needle. For example, if it has been gone in five centimeter, I mark this all the uh, dilators with five centimeter, and then we don't go beyond five centimeter. And where uh, so therefore, uh, as we all know. Uh, and during ultrasound, you cannot guide uh, your uh, your dilators. So this is the the mark which we stop here. So this is the, the dilator stops at that mark. So and and one assistant is continually pushing the water through the ureteric catheter. This is end of the procedure. This is another uh, case uh, uh, which we did uh, uh, in supine position, again, ultrasound guided. And, and this is a large stone. And uh, again, you can see the, uh, the it is nearly every way uh, it is involved. And, and again, if you see, this is the needle going in. And this is puncturing here. You'd see
So, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, Professor Ahmad, what I mean, basically, I personally feel uh, 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 using ultrasound, particularly in supine position, you're sitting, this, the, the ultrasound machine is uh, in front of you, and it is so friendly, so easy, and I feel once you are into the system, what I mean, you can go to into any calyx, particularly if you're going through the middle calyx. I normally try to go through the middle calyx. And if you go in, you can reach out to any calyx. But you, if you, one thing is very important in ultrasound, particularly ultrasound puncture, if you want to do more than one puncture, the best thing is to place your guide wires before dilating one track. So therefore, place if you are making if you want to make three tracks, um, uh, make three puncture, pass guide wire, then dilate one. But not that you dilated one, then you are dilating the other one. So it, that's that's paramount. So this was the message, and uh, thank you very much again, uh, Hamad. Uh, it has uh, been nice uh, on this form. Thank you very much, Atta. Wonderful presentation. I know that you've got a huge experience uh, of uh, doing these things for a very long time now, and uh, and I'm really grateful for uh, sharing your experience with minimal gadgets. So a very simple, straightforward curvilinear probe of an ultrasound, a simple uh, monitor. So wonderful work uh, and thank you very much.